we're going to try to experiment with the atomic style. It's an age, an era of futuristic design. Space programs started, TV came around, and we are going to design something very, very precise and very, very abstract at the same time. Are you ready? I am. All right, now's the time to make our atomic age. Abstract, but yet clean lines, clean colors. The first thing we'll do is, I chose colors that I like together, and what I'd like you to do is put them down next to each other. Let's put an orange, another orange. Two different oranges, very close. This is a greenish gray. Looks like it's brown, but it's a beautiful red, pink. These are very mellow colors. Get a little blue in there. You know what? I don't think I'll use that one. It's way too light. This is why we check our colors. Um, we'll keep that. Maybe we'll do a small area. And then my favorite olive green. These are the colors that I chose to use, so I'll keep them handy. When you're doing circles, I always suggest using a guide or a template. And when you're using these, you have a guaranteed circle. Now remember, these are atomic age. They are round. You can use any pen you choose. Make sure it is a permanent. Go slowly around. I can already see that I didn't get that perfect, but I'm going to turn it into something else. I'm going to take my smaller and make another curve. This is something you learn when you're doing art, especially when you're doing something for the first time, is go ahead and challenge yourself to do something over what you consider a mistake and make it into something new. See there? So I've got my round, beautiful circles. I think I need a half a circle. Let's not line them up too much. To do this, I'm going to use it like this, and then I'm going to move it and twist it. Let's see, here to here. No, let's go smaller. This is always a challenge, is to see what works best for you. I'm gonna start here and go around and we create that shape we want beautiful I'm not looking for too many circles because there's these really cool organic designs let's try this one here here and then up I am not pressing on the paper too hard because what will happen is it'll stick and dig let's do this these are a little mid-century, but they all came out of that automation period that we were talking about. So we've got one, two, three. We're going to connect them with straight lines. One more. I am going to, let's do this. Whoops, I'm going to turn my paper, and I'm going to do, there we go. Those are my shapes. I can move my circles out of the way. I use a clear ruler so I can see through it. And then I have my father's T, I almost said T square, it's a triangle that he used in college over 70 years ago. Now we're going to connect these. We're gonna make it so that they make total sense. So I'm gonna start here, go all the way across. And then I'm gonna move it just a little bit. We want these beautiful, straight, clean lines. Two, yeah, two is enough. I tend to go for threes. Now, turn my paper, use this to see how can we bring this into the picture. I don't want to cut it off too much. So let's start here. Let's bring, in fact, I'll have to use my ruler. Let's bring all three of these together. So you're gonna turn it and look, where is that line going to look best? Remember, we're putting color in this. So the larger space will have more color. I need to break this up. I can see it already. 
I'm going to pull it over here and create a triangle. You'll find that you're also creating shapes as you're doing this. So once you have something down, you're like, oh, that looks nice. But then you attach a line to it and you change it completely. I'm going to do something a little different here. Let's do this. One. Now it's going to look a little bit like a lotus flower. The Egyptian style. But I still like this. And to be quite honest, I think it needs a little circle. So let's see. I'm going to just do this. Sometimes a simple dot will change it completely. Then the colors will come in here and change it. Not enough broken up space here. I think I want to do this. I think I do want to connect this to this. Let's see. You can design as you go from here to here. Let's see. Yes. And then I need another. And that way I've captured those two lines completely. There we go. Now it's flowing more. I like to keep it flowing and interesting, but not too busy. Remember, clean designs from that era. Put my dot in there. That gives you a reference of what you're doing. This is way too large, so I am going to insert another circle, but I am not going to go over these lines. Let's start here and go around. And remember, this is the first time you're doing it. You're going to be experimenting with your designs. I'm doing this to break that up. Now, we have this. This just doesn't appeal to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it with... There you go. Simple lines pull things together. And actually, no, let's just leave that. I can always go back with some dots. So I have that there. I like that quite well. And I think what we're going to do over here, through here, is we're going to put one more. And then we'll do this. I guess I'm not using my triangle today. But that's all right. Keep that there. Since that's already a dot, I'm going to do every other one up and down. Connect these with a larger dot. See how it's starting to come together? Simple little dots, simple little lines. And then I really want one more circle in here. I think this is just my, my rotational circle area. All right. Oh, yes. See? C completely changed it. Now, this is pure, and that's all right. But I think it's too open. One more. Nope, too big. Let's try the bottom. Am I asking for trouble? Let's do a half a circle. There we go. Oh, I think I need to do this too then. Um, let's put... I have to turn it and look at it this way. What I'm going to do is straight lines. Let's bring this... No. Oh, we can attach this. Let's go straight across with this now. So that it comes together. And then we'll make one more triangle in the middle. All right, let's, this dust doesn't, this just bothers me. So what I'm gonna do is do my own. Let's see my own circle, take my time. There we go, make it space age, atomic age. So let's go in with our colors now. When you're coloring, use your finger as a bumper so that you can stop it from going over the lines. You do want to clean the cleanest white background you can. Colored pencils are ideal for this. I am going to put in all of my golden color, my golden yellow first. See, when you use your finger, go light. You can always go dark on the top. Watch, I'll make this darker for us. Go, go, gold. I think we need this. When you're using straight lines, go ahead and do a little outline first. Coloring goes rather quickly when you go and do one color at a time. Let's go up here. Checkerboards, it's good to use not more than three colors. 
because you you lose that um, design. It, it's something that's kind of traditional. I'm scrumbling a little bit in here because it's a smaller area. One, two, let's do what I said. Let's fill this in. All right, now that I have my gold, do you think I have enough? Should we pull some here? Yes. Again, I say this quite often. Once you do the work and do your design, it's almost just like coloring. I think we need a piece here. All right, up and down. I'm actually scrumbling because it is going in a loop action. Your techniques that we talked about in my colored pencil module and my drawing module, I mentioned that. So we got that, that there. This is missing something. Let's pull it up. I'm actually thinking out loud with you because that's what my brain is telling me. Come on, go up there, Miss Linda. And let's just do this big. It's a fairly light color, so you can go in the larger spots. I'll press a little harder on this one. Turning your paper makes your color application much easier. All right, one color down. We'll put that out to the side. Blues and yellows, purples. Um, I'm going to go with this. I'm going to test it out again. Yes. Keep your pencil sharpener handy because you will be surprised at how you wear these out. I'm going to do this. It's got a tiny bit of a, I don't know, it's got a bit of turquoise-ish to, turquoise-ish, making up words again. It's gray, but it's got blue and green in it. All right, see, I'm using very subtle colors today. Let's go in here. I'm going to fill every closed space with color. I do not want big open spaces. No white spaces but the background. Negative space, save it for the background. See, I'm starting to try to hurry and now my coloring is becoming inconsistent, which means there's open areas, there's lines. All right, one, two, three. Let's do this little tip, dark. I actually think I want to do this over here too. My man-made circle, darker. All right, so we've got that. Now let's do this. A blue. I'm going to go light colors today. I'm not going to go deep. I really do want it soft. And again, Miss Linda colors fast. You don't need to color fast. All right. Blue, blue. Let's put blue on each side of this. I've got that Egyptian lotus flower in my head, so we're going with it. Okay. Yes, I'm going to. Sometimes that you're tempted to put so many colors in that they get lost and one color will confuse another color. When you keep a color palette and check it out first, you're guaranteed that they're going to coordinate and look good together. Large, I think I'm going right here. I, part of me wants to go like this and I cannot do that because it's smaller spaces. You hear me? the click of the finger bumper, my tips and tricks at work. Do I need an, I do, I need another slice of blue up here. Plus the marker kind of made a jiggity jiggity line right there and I can disguise it. Um, one more. Balance is important. You can kind of Look at it from afar, back away from it, check it out, and then you'll see. I think I'm going to go in with that pinkish color next. Now, you don't want to put the pink next to the light blue. For some reason, it goes right into, you know, someone's having a baby shower or something. There we go. Not too much, and it's actually a really muted pink. It's more of a um, 
one of the many, many skin tone colors uh, right here. I'm going to keep these concentrated in the center only because even though I looked at it, I'm not super fond of it. Although it's looking better the more I put on one, two, three. I think it would be too much up here. Let's try this. If I need more, I can come back. All right, I'm doing this too. That way it ties all of these in the center. All right. I'm going with my green because this is my favorite. So, in fact, I am doing this in the large areas, holding it like I've been taught and how I've taught. Rounded, rounded. I'm not sure that I like the open spaces of that, so I'm going to go over it. Keeping that finger, keeping myself in the lines. All right, let's see. Maybe I will leave some white. Now that I'm looking at it, I, it, it could be white in some of those areas. All right, let's see. So as I was saying earlier, the more open spaces you made the make, the more you're going to be coloring, which is fine because most of us, when we do these projects, want to sit and take our time and just get lost in it. Doing it fast is a little bit harder. And green, green, green. See how the colors are starting to complement each other? One color next to another will make it beautiful. I think I sharpened my pencils too much. Green, green, green. I want to pull this here too. All right. I'm going to put in a few more colors. And then when we're done, I went out of the line, but that's all right. I can take an eraser later and lift that right up. It's because I'm trying to go so fast. Green, green, green. Let's put green in here. I'm probably not going to use all of the colors that I had planned to. Let's see about this one. Mm. Oh, let's try this brown up here by the blue. It's not really a brown. It's a red with a brown tint to it. I think a stark red would be a little too much. And I made a complicated design. So this can take just a little while. I think if I stop talking a little bit and maybe just color, it'll go faster. And I am going to leave some white spaces. I can see with this color palette that we don't need to saturate it with color. I can change my mind later after I've looked at it for a little while. But for right now, I think I'm liking what I see. I think I just need that bright orange, which I'm not going to put here. All right. If you go in a different direction, make sure you go over what you've already colored to keep it going the same direction. Um, let's do the red. I keep calling it, it is a red. There we go. Fill it in. All right. This is what creating a piece of artwork is like. You're doing it. You think you're done. You think you've done everything you can. And then you're like, no, I think a little bit more right there. Sometimes the hardest thing is to know when to stop. This needs the gold. So we're going big with gold now. And that's going to be it. Because this is a color that's the brightest. All right. I'm just going to do scrumbling really fast because everyone knows how to use their pencils. 
and I've taught you how to use your color palettes to where they're complementary. I'm going all the way around. This is a very mellow palette. Alrighty. I'm hurrying because I know I've been coloring for quite a long time. I will go back and clean this up. You can actually see the red in this when you're using it. I can see the red coming out as, you know, the mixture of red and yellow and just to show you the difference in hues. Now you can really see the red. One, two, three. And I think we're close to being done here. Again, I'm rushing. Please don't rush when you're coloring. And actually, I think I need a little green in here. Let's see what happens when you press a little bit harder. All right, let's do this. Let's just finish it up. Let's see, now I'm using three colors. And that's about all you want so it doesn't end up looking like a plaid. Nothing wrong with plaids. It's just not very atomic age. All right, here we go. I've got my colors down. I will go over and recolor this to make sure it's clean and clear. I'm gonna show you the one I did when I was trying it. Little stronger colors, same design, kind of, you know, I've got a lot more dots in that. I can go back and do dots in this. So when you see a picture of this, it's gonna be finished after I do everything that I want to before I show it to you. Enjoy, take your time, get your stencils, check your colors. Thanks for joining me today. Go to artwithmisslinda.com for more classes.